are these people? I wrote an article because I saw this and I could not believe that nobody else had written about it. Jill Stein had posted it to her Twitter. Um, Primo Radical had posted it to his Facebook, and that's where I got this image. We can talk about this image another time, but Robert Reich today posted a, a, an article that had this exact image, which we then found out came from Slate. I didn't know that, but I thought it came from Primo because he had altered it and added his own thing. What is this? DNC openly hiring third-party infiltrators targeting RFK Jr., Jill Stein, and Cornell West. What? Yes, specifically mentioning the three candidates they deem potential threats. They just don't care anymore who knows about it, because guess what? There's no repercussions. So this was published on Memorial Day. So it's been a couple weeks since, since it was out. On Friday afternoon, May 24th, I saw a post on Facebook that blew my mind. By the way, this is published exclusively, not exclusively, but it's on IndieMediaToday.com. It's also on IndieNewsNetwork.substack.com. Those are the only two places you can find this article. On Friday afternoon, May 24th, I saw a post on Facebook that blew my mind. Posted by Indie Media Award honoree, Primo Radical, containing a job listing, containing a job listing for the Democratic National Committee, or DNC. The role is for an independent and third-party project manager, and it encompasses a lot of ground. He included two screenshots with details of the job posting, which has since been pulled down from their website. It was pulled down after a day. He also highlights certain things here. And then I actually listed out what all the key responsibilities are. Subverting de democracy, be a snake. So here's the text from the listing in case you can't see the images, plus a couple of bullets from the original job posting not shown in his screen caps. I'm just going to cover a couple of the key bullets that the third party and independent project manager will be tasked with overseeing and managing third party and independent related work in their respective states, as well as overseeing an aspect of the program, an aspect of the program, meaning it's a larger program. The initial phase of work, meaning there's more phases, will be focused on the following objectives. These are really important. Number one, they want to gather on the ground intel to inform our overall landscape assessment of independent, independent and third party candidates, including, very importantly, ballot access progress, because they've spent a lot of time challenging that in the past, campaign activity, organizational strength, and voter grassroots enthusiasm, because they want to know how, how excited people are and how well organized they are, identifying and activating in-state leaders and supporters for four current and future program priorities. What are those priorities? Volunteer trackers who attend candidate and campaign events. They want spies. Surrogates for earned media and bracketing events. <clears throat> they want this person to find mouthpieces. Volunteers for petition review and other legal adjacent support for potential ballot access challenges. They're already preparing to do it. Micro influencers for content amplification through organic channels. We will get to this later. That is really critical. And then, of course, researching ballot access related info, participating in petition review and supporting petition review programs. The biggest thing, though, here is the responsibilities. What will you be doing in this role? You'll be following RFK Jr., Cornell West, and Jill Stein candidate events in your region and sharing intel in real time with the DNC. And you'll be building an army, recruiting volunteers to attend these events and report back. So you'll be creating a pyramid scheme of spies where you will be the chief spy. Yeah. Proactive outreach, yeah. right? So then they also want you to proactive out outreach to in-state political contacts, such as party leadership, staff, and elected officials and coalition partners for information on in-state activity. So everybody's in, in cahoots and collaborating. All right. Assistant ballot right. tracking so access. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was going to say it's probably someone, if they're following RFK, Cornell, and Jill, and have in-state political contact. 
It might even people that are supposed to help you ba- get ballot access and things like that. Well, we'll we'll look at that. We're going to ask that question yeah. a little bit, but um, yeah, you delivery message guidance and managing DM and chat groups for content distribution it, again. Um, the biggest thing is is ballot access and spying. So I say that they're recruiting spies and infiltrators in plain sight. I said I could not believe that the Dems would be so flagrant and dumb to advertise this on their own website. I jumped over to their website, looked up their current career opportunities, but of course didn't find it. It had indeed already been pulled down after one day. So I used the old Google machine to search the job title and found the post on LinkedIn, complete with the link to the DNC's LinkedIn page that has 47,000 followers. So I know it was legit because it linked to the DNC. It had to be posted by them. Use of the word Intel twice in the first bullet of both sections tells you what they really want. All right, and there's a screen cap from LinkedIn. And there's a link to the LinkedIn post. I'm showing all the receipts here, folks. So professional political spying ballot access version. One of the tools the past few election cycles used by the Democrats to keep third party and independent runs off the ballot is challenging the petitions and signatures that qualify them to be on the ballot. The uh, where the Democrats intend to once again closely monitor the progress of obtaining ballot access for 2024 in states where third parties and independents still need to get onto a voting line. The goal is then to identify potential challenges the DNC can issue at the last minute to undermine their overall effectiveness, especially in swing states, and get those potential perceived spoilers off the ballot entirely. We saw successful Democratic challenges in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin over the past four years to disqualify Greens from the November 2020 ballot and a failed bid to get Matthew Ho thrown off the ballot in his Senate run for the Green Party in North Carolina in 2022. Greens will be on the presidential ballot in Wisconsin in 2024 for the first time since 2016, which is funny enough, the last time Dr. Stein was the Green Party candidate. The Greens lost Mm. access in New York after 2020 and are still working to obtain and submit the necessary 45,000 signatures before the deadline to qualify to be on the ballot. They have, by the way, um, today is June 7th, they turned those in the other day. So they have now met that 45,000, but they fully expect every one of those to be challenged for signature match by the New York Democrats. So they're working to get double the number of signatures required to ensure that only even half of them will qualify. The DNC role calls for recruiting volunteer trackers to attend candidate and campaign events and to report back on campaign activity plus also manage surrogates for earned media and bracketing events. The Democrats want this person to build an army of supporters to undermine the efforts of grassroots Americans to genuinely organize against the corporate duopoly. So here's the other question, and this is, this is speculation on my part, but for D chess causing infighting and suspicion. Why would the DNC specifically mention the candidates they're targeting in the job posting? This is one of the things I couldn't understand. Why would you say who you're looking? Why don't you just say third party and independent? Why do you have to mention the names? Well, let's think about it for a second. Here's one reason. To get everyone inside each of the named campaigns currently looking at each other sideways. Plus make them highly suspicious and cautious of new volunteers and supporters as potential infiltrators. It also serves to allow campaign supporters to accuse legit independent critics of working for the DNC as literally happened to me last week or two weeks ago. And there's an entire thread, but this person says, who's running this account at Indie Left News that is consistently trying to smear Dr. Jill Stein and Green Party? It's almost as if they're working for the DNC themselves. I've asked you a number of times, Mm -hmm. do you have the courage to debate me on this in real time? This guy works, he 
He's just a Green Party fan. I'm not going to debate him. My answer is no. I'm not going to debate you. There's nothing to debate. I am team none of the above. And then here's somebody else saying, maybe they got one of those jobs to spy on the Greens. Uh-huh. No, I'm just calling out the bullshit. And by the way, I'm exposing that the Greens are being spied on. Yeah. Dr. Stein knows it exists, but do and the you others? have no plan to deal with it. Right? Dr. Stein right. posted it to her Twitter account an hour before Primo Radical shared it to his Facebook page, and she uses an opportunity to fundraise. Yep. Help us fight back and make sure we get on the New York ballot. Not they're corrupt. I mean, not we're fighting this system. No, it's just make sure we get on one ballot. Like, it's... The ask is never big enough. I shared the link to the LinkedIn post in Dr. Stein's replies to the above tweet that evening, and I told her that the ad has been pulled down from the lever.co website, which is the, the employment hiring site for the DNC, but LinkedIn still has it, posted a day ago and no longer accepting applications after six submissions... I could not believe they actually had the gall to name the people they're trying to infiltrate. Why list the names? Weird. I hadn't really thought about it much then. <laughs> Booby Kennedy certainly has been messed with by the DNC since he declared that he was running for president last year. They've continually denied him Secret Service protection. Um, the, look at him being shown as a spoiler candidate and fake protesters being accused of fake protesters in Newsweek, they've been messing with him 100% to the point that he actually had to leave the party to run as an independent because he knew he was never going to get a fair shake there. Not a defender and not a fan of Booby Kennedy, but the Democrats did not run a fair, a fair primary. Now, what's really cool is the day that this was published, Lee Camp got a hold of it, and he actually showed it to Dr. West and Dr. West basically said, yeah, I know that they're trying to infiltrate. They're not going, they're not going to be successful. <clears throat> Peter Dow. Sure they aren't already have. Yeah, like, exactly. Um, Micro-influencers. Hmm. Now, remember above, one of the items listed in phase one of the job is micro-influencers for content amplification through organic channels. What does that mean exactly? Well, Yep. Reef, you found this from Social Pilot, and this talks about the different sizes of influencers. So a micro-influencer are individuals who typically have a following between 10,000 to 100,000 on a specific social media platform. It's not just about the followers. Okay. They are defined. They're defined by their niche expertise and the strong connection they share with their audience. All right. We've seen... Gen Z influencers like Harry Sisson and Victor Xi and Chris Mowry amplifying DNC talking points on Twitter, paid for by a PR firm, Palette Management, to effectively co-manage their Twitter account. That tip, by the way, to INN's Robert Durden for digging on that, see below. They often post content very similar to each other, spaced out minutes apart to push a simultaneous narrative. Now, the reason why I brought this is to show that the DNC has already been hiring influencers. These aren't even micro-influencers. These are at an even higher level. They have influ They have uh, followings on Twitter of between 200 and 600,000 followers, or at least the last I checked. And here's Rob's receipts, where he grabbed a screen cap about Pallet, Man about Pallet Media claiming that they have been the agency of record for Biden for president. Okay. Then you have this guy, Juan Delgado, burrito hunting, who um, said that Axios made a mistake in reporting about unpaid pro-dem TikTok influencers. It listed Harry Sisson as one of them, except this isn't true. His LinkedIn <laughs> says that he works for Pallet and Pallet Media was paid $200,000 by the DNC around the time he was hired. Mm. And we've got that FEC filing with the yep. 200000 in this article too. But here is Rob showing that 15 minutes apart at 627 and 642, they write very similar messages with 
um, you know, similar in a similar messaging, but not identical. How is that happening? It's all coordinated. Yeah. Here's the FEC filing for the DNC proving that they hired pallet management in October 22 for a $200,000 retainer to hire social media influencers. Durden started smelling a rat last August. He goes, you ever get that feeling of deja vu? As a casual user of Twitter, one gets used to seeing pro-establishment bots repeatedly recycling the same talking points. It comes with the territory if you follow American politics on social media. But if you look at these posts, they're, two, they're from two very large accounts run by youngsters who seemingly only exist to boost Joe Biden and attack Donald Trump and who we know are actually real people. She's been on Fox News and Sisson has a podcast with fellow proud Biden-ling Chris Mowry. And upon inspecting some of their recent posts, she'll immediately notice what Rob noticed. The posts are nearly identical in verbiage, messaging, and drumroll. They were posted within minutes of each other. So, these young Bidenites, ger gerontophilic propaganda op, is so transparent, these posts are almost identical, both in verbiage and messaging, and came out within seven minutes of each other, almost like they got a memo or something, using the same photo, even. Hmm, how about that? So we ask you, dear reader, what are the chances that these two had the same idea organized in the same way using similar verbiage at the same time? The correct answer is near zero, but for the people who'd say that maybe it was just a coincidence, have a look at some of the other posts these two put out recently. And that was in another article that we didn't include. But here's the one that came out seven minutes apart using the same picture and even had similar formatting, capital letters, the phrase America is stronger is parroted and the quintessential Biden is cool, amazing rhetoric that one comes to expect from almost every post by either of these two is as omnipresent as ever. 2.53 and 3 o'clock on August 18th, the same thing. Damn and history. These two are so similar that an argument could be made that one was just copy pasted from the other or more likely, they're getting these posts via some sort of memo sent to them by the same source at the DNC or their marketing firm. <coughs> Here's another one, 18 minutes apart. Again, using similar language, same picture. These young neolibs are basically just robots who get their programming directly from the DNC. And again, 529... 5.11 p.m., 18 minutes apart, talking about when Biden went and talked about how his kitchen almost got set on fire, right? So DNC goes next level. And this is what I mean by micro-influencers. This new role advertised on May 23rd, 2024 by the DNC appears to take their influencer strategy one level deeper in terms of overall follower count, to hyper-targeted influential creators who have built a high trust factor with their audience, then attempt to align with them, outright advertise on their show and channel, or even pay them for support. From the social pilot link, the article that had been linked above, quote, once you finalize the list of influencers, start reaching out to them. One good thing about micro-influencers is they're rarely accessible. You can begin by reaching out to them through the platform where they're active and popular. Micro-influencers remain active in their DMs and usually reply back promptly. And I'd say that that's pretty accurate. But one of the responsibilities of the independent and third-party project manager would be to identify and make deals with micro-influencers, so it's important to look at the landscape of independent channels that either push or go easy on Democrats who may be working with them. Don't dismiss the corporate-friendly, independent, quote-unquote, media like TYT, The Hills Rising, Breaking Points, and others in their universe. All would be potential targets, even though they have slightly larger follower counts. Um, so, what does this job pay? 65 grand a year! 
Well, yeah, sort of. But for 65000 a year, you too can cosplay spy and work to ensure the duopoly remain the only parties in power. Let's do it. How much does the job pay? Well, per the LinkedIn post, the starting salary is just 65000 a year, according to It's Me Sarah P on Twitter. That's that's a, a, a supporter, now paid annual subscriber to, to IndieMediaToday.com. Thank you so much, Sarah. Of course... There's no guarantee of staying employed beyond early November. So a potential hire is looking at $5,400 a month for the next five months before taxes, of course. That's $22,000. Sell out your entire country for twenty two grand. Now, here's the question you talked about, Reef. What would someone doing this job look like? And I'm not going to speculate, but I want everyone to put in their minds and start putting a picture of what this person would look like and how they would act. Try to reverse engineer the profile of someone who would both apply for this job as well as be acceptable to the DNC as a hire. You would see them at campaign events. They would appear to be friendly to multiple parties' campaigns to gain access for some insider dish. They would be active online and well-known in the independent media world, both the creators as well as watchers. Chatters can sometimes have a lot of influence over other viewers in a live stream. And we've actually seen at times where somebody who's taking over a chat can literally kill a chat and drive viewers away from the stream and from wanting to engage in chat. Now, here's the other yeah. big question I ask. Are there more roles like this? Maybe to infiltrate Republicans too? This discovery only serves to open even more questions. How many times has this been done in the past by the DNC? Because you know this isn't the first time they've done this. Are there currently employees of the DNC infiltrating their Republican opponents right now? I guess is yes. I'm guessing that the Republicans are also doing the same thing to the Democrats, hiring people to infiltrate and spy on the Democratic Party campaigns. I don't know. I'm guessing so. How much budget does an org that raised over $2 billion last presidential cycle commit to an operation to undermine their opponents? Now, technically, the Democrats themselves did not raise $2 billion. I know that. They have their super PACs and they have their private funding and it wasn't all DNC money, but I'm talking about hey, the money that actually supports Democrats, whether that is PAC money, super PAC money, or direct funding. We would also need to look a little closer at the DNC cutouts like law firm Perkins Coey and PR firms like Pallet Management and the lobbying firms and the Intel firms to see who they start working with if we can. And this is a question I probably should have asked very early on. Is this in any way illegal, what they're doing? Do the third party and independent campaigns have any kind of a case with the FEC against the Democrats for doing this? Thank you for reading. What do you think of all this? What do you think of all this, Kitty and Reef? Yeah. What do you think of these? I mean, I, I feel like with this is just what is in the public, is in the, the drunken public. Yep. Um, you know, where it's like, what's going on that we don't see, right? What positions are being filled for all sorts of like infiltration like this? Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, you just got to kind of keep your head on a swivel and be discerning and have a plan of, like, figuring out how to beat this infiltration, you know? Like, I don't, I don't know how. Great things in place. Well, what do you put, like, run a like, test? What do you run a test? What do you put, put a test in front of some people and let them answer questions? How do you feel about X, Y, Z? And let them answer on a variety range maybe. of issues? Wouldn't they be coached on that by the DNC, I mean, though? Probably. I mean, I feel like there's, you know, uh, background checks and stuff like that. Like, I mean, we've know. seen we've seen 
alleged infiltrators into look the people's party had accusations of infiltration um yeah the green party certainly has also had accusations of infiltration in the 2020 campaign the neo libs and howie hawkins uh took over and basically put a russia gating yep. big pharma agenda in place um yeah so Again, I hadn't really seen anybody else write this up. So IndieMediaToday.com, please go there, share this article. Uh, I also published an article this morning about Stripe and Substack and Stripe being the online exclusive payment processor for several sites, including Buy Me a Coffee, where we also have where I also have a, a thing hooked up. Locals, where a lot of creators also go. They are not exclusive, but they are a provider that works with Kofi as well. See the QR code for Kofi. So a lot of the creator economy is relying on Stripe for payouts. And if you are interested at all, go check out IndieMediaToday.com and take a look at the Stripe Monopoly article that is up as well. Uh, here you will be able to look, scroll down and look for original articles and that plus an audio reading of this past article that we read and the original article itself are all there. And a lot of the other articles that I've written as originals, like the one about not getting fooled by Kyle Kalinske and Crystal Ball and Chris Smalls blocking INN. We've got a whole story about that coming up, I'm guessing, this weekend. Um, all right. We got through it. Woohoo! It was it was a long one. I Ooh. I warned you I warned you it would be a long one. Um please keep supporting INN. Please keep supporting independent media. Once again, here are all of our supporters that we really love and appreciate. Grateful for all of them. Patreon.com slash indie news network, indie news network .substack.com, rumble.com slash C slash indie news network, C being for channel. And Cash App, dollar sign Indie News Network, are the best ways to donate and support. 